Hey guys, today we're gonna learn about the science behind rocket engines. Now, unfortunately, I'm not Elon Musk, so I don't have access to a huge rocket, but I do have this homemade rocket and this homemade rocket engine, so hopefully we can learn a lot of the same principles. So this is gonna be a multi-part series, but today we're gonna learn about solid fuel rocket engines. So uh, let's cross our fingers and hope this thing works. In this video, I'm going to be mixing chemicals that are designed to burn really well. And doing this incorrectly can be both dangerous and illegal, so please don't try this at home. Now, most spaceships use liquid-fueled engines, which allow for the amount of thrust to be throttled or even completely stopped. However, these systems are a lot more complex and thus a lot more expensive. Solid fuel rockets like the ones I'm making today are still used though, most notably as the boosters for the space shuttle missions. Well, at least they were used back when that was a thing. Regardless, they can put out a lot of thrust or force for a lot less weight, which is perfect for a gigantic spaceship that's just trying to get moving. Now, the two most important things in this solid fuel is an oxidizer and a fuel source. In this case, sugar is the fuel source and potassium nitrate is the oxidizer. As we can see, if we try to burn sugar, it will burn just not that fast. And this is where the fire triangle comes in. The fire triangle shows the three things that are needed for a fire. First, we have combustion, which is pretty easy to get with an open flame. Next is fuel, which of course is the actual thing that's burning. And finally, we have oxygen. Even though oxygen is in the air all around us, it's not in super high concentration. Cars will use turbos to bring in more oxygen, and jet engines will even compress air themselves, but rockets carry their own supply of oxygen. If you look at potassium nitrate, we see it's made up of one potassium atom, one nitrogen atom, and three oxygen atoms. But this stuff doesn't burn alone, even when we put a torch to it. Instead, it needs something to give that oxygen to, and sugar is more than willing to accept it. When we combine that extra oxygen from the potassium nitrate with the sugar, we see that it burns really fast. And in this reaction, carbon dioxide and water vapor is formed. The one thing that we all know about fire is that it produces heat, and a reaction like this can get anywhere from 4,000 to 7,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this heat will cause that carbon dioxide and that water vapor to rapidly expand. And as it does this, it produces thrust, which forces that rocket upwards into the sky. And we'll go into that, you know, more how it happens in another video. If you look at the rockets I made, you can see that there's a hole drilled in the center of them. And this increases the surface area that that burning can take place on. And having a normal hole like this will cause a nice and steady increase in thrust as time goes on and that surface area increases as that hole gets bigger. This cross-cut design, on the other hand, will cause a lot of thrust at first with a steady drop-off. And a multi-point star like this one will cause a ton of thrust at first because of the huge surface area, but it will drop off very, very quickly. The boosters found on the space shuttle have an 11-star pattern, which means that a massive amount of the over two and a half million foot-pounds of thrust given off is at the beginning even though that star shape then turns into more of a cone shape, which allows for a not so sharp decline in that thrust. So even though my engines are less than a millionth the size of those huge boosters, they're also about 50 million times cheaper. So I guess we'll just have to live with that for now. Woo! Uh oh, oh no. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's an example of science right there where things don't exactly work how you planned. So it went up straight, but because I didn't have enough black powder, the parachute charge didn't quite come out, but I think we still learned quite a bit. And so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. And thank you so, so much to all my patrons. I really appreciate all you guys. Thanks. So that didn't work quite as well as I had hoped. Um, 
It's not like this is rocket science or anything. Well, at least it was supposed to be. I guess I'm just not very good at it. 